Hello, hello, hello everyone. I am Sophia Melanie, the debt demolisher. What an honor and privilege it is to be before you this evening as we continue our conversations around student loan forgiveness. First, I want to pop off and apologize for missing the last live stream. I had a very intense work week last week and I could not part away to have our live stream on Wednesday night. So I truly hope that you understand and for and are forgiving of me missing the live stream but i have tons of videos that are on my page that's available to you so i hope that you were able to utilize that information in the interim but i'm glad to be live before you all tonight i want to ensure that if you have any questions that you please feel free to put those in the chat as you enter the room share this out invite other people in hit the hearts and the roses and all that other good stuff that i normally see flying on the screen and i'm going to go ahead and pull up some of the questions that i received prior to that i did not have an opportunity to finish addressing hopefully i still got it on this computer because i'm still trying to recoup from the lack of sleep that i've had over these past couple of weeks but we're gonna push through and I'm going to pull up some of the questions so I can at least address those while you guys are in here and putting your own questions in the chat. Okay, so the first question that I see is I took out a Parent PLUS loan this past August and it says if my income is eligible, do I qualify if I haven't made any payments? So I'm presuming that this person is asking specifically about the one-time debt relief. I doubt that they're talking about the public service loan forgiveness simply because they are asking as to whether if they've just taken out a loan, a parent plus loan, will it qualify for the one-time debt relief? One of the things that was very clearly stated on studentaid.gov forward slash debt relief if you go to that page, it breaks out the three-part plan that was introduced and announced August 24th. And a part of that plan was the one-time debt relief where those who meet the income criteria will be able to receive either $10,000 in loan forgiveness or $20,000 of loan forgiveness as long as you have a federal loan as well as as long as you meet the income criteria and then the 20K applies to those who were Pell Grant recipients. Now, the stipulation with the one-time debt relief is that the original loans had to be dispersed no later than June 30th, 2022. So if you recently taken out a Parent PLUS loan, any type of loan, and that disbursement date is after June 30th, 2022, then unfortunately, you missed the window to qualify for the one-time debt relief. Now, if you have existing loans already, maybe you have other children or maybe you have loans of your own and you already have federal student loan balances, then yeah, those could potentially be eligible for the relief as long as you meet the income criteria. But if you do not, and that first federal loan that you've taken out, whether as a parent plus or as a student yourself, if it was done after June 30th, 2022, which will be July 1st, 2022, up until now, <laughs> then unfortunately, or even going forward, then unfortunately, those loans will not qualify for the one-time debt relief. So that was a great question. Thank you so much for following and thank you so much for sharing out this live stream. Oh Lord, y'all, my light trying to fall down. I got to at least have some good lighting for you guys now. Okay, I got to have some good light. So my stand is trying to fall over. Let me hold this in place. Next question is, what if I don't have income anymore? I'm a stay-at-home mom now. How can I go about this? I feel like I might have answered this question, but I'm going to answer it again. Again, when it comes to the one-time debt relief, my suggestion to you is that when the application becomes available because right now is not available i know when the announcement first came out they were updating and letting folks know that we don't have to do anything now and then they said okay well the application is going to be available in early october and then they changed the website again to say it's going to be available sometime in october they just said october and they took early out 
And I'm assuming because of all of the changes and the conversations around the FFEL, privately held versus federally held that has kind of came up recently inside of the media and the news that they've had to extend that that date out of making the application available because I'm pretty sure they probably had to make some changes as a result of that. I'm not saying that that is the case, but I'm presuming just because they updated their website to take out early October from the updates related to the one-time debt relief. But I would say once the application comes out, make sure that you just apply and what they're asking you for in terms of income you'll be able to tell because I can't speak for it if I don't see the application for myself. So once it becomes available, of course, they're going to have the instructions on how to complete the form. And then that is when I can really go into further detail with explaining what it is you need to do and whether if you have no income at all, if you would still qualify. But I'm, I'm assuming if you don't have any income at all, then then that's less than $125,000. So, but yeah. But let's just see what they ask for when the application comes out. Where do we go to get assistance for the loan relief? So for the one-time debt relief, you do not need to pay anybody to give you any type of assistance. You don't have to do anything. <laughs> when it comes to the one-time debt relief of either the 10K or the 20K, Come on, man, my light, you guys. My light is trying to fall over. I need to put my camera back up here so I can hold it in place. Oh, gosh. Excuse the bloopers. I'm normally, my production is normally on point, but this, yeah. <laughs> that just happened, so I got to keep my, keep my light together. Oh, gosh, now I can't even see my screen. Whew, okay. So you don't have to pay anyone to assist you with the one-time debt relief. You don't have to do any consolidations. You don't have to do anything. For the one-time debt relief, the only thing that you have to be concerned about is filling out the application when it becomes available. And I'm pretty sure it's going to be plain and simple. And once the application becomes available, you know that I will be doing demos to walk you guys through, clarifying anything that may seem convoluted around how to respond to specific questions that may be inside of the application. But for the one-time debt relief, you don't have to pay anybody to do that because you don't have to do anything. Maybe some folks may want more hand-holding around the public service loan forgiveness because to be eligible for that, some people may have to consolidate. And I think what people are having challenges with determining is to whether or not if they should or shouldn't consolidate. And that in and of itself is more so of a consulting type of conversation as opposed to a submit this application for me conversation. So if you're thinking about submitting the application for me, you can literally do that yourself. So I wouldn't pay anybody to do that. Honestly, I, I wouldn't. And the resources are available and I'm glad to be one of those channels to be able to provide that source of resource to you all when it comes to the one-time debt relief. So just hang tight, especially if you, even if you had privately held FFEL loans, the time for you to consolidate, you can't do that anyway anymore because they shut that down September 28th was the last day that you could potentially consolidate and still be eligible for the relief, but that's said and done now because right now it's October the 9th. <laughs> so that's said and done. Thank you all so much for the follows and the shares. I truly appreciate it. I tr truly appreciate it. I have Parent Plus loans. Do I need to apply? Apply for what? Let me know what you're asking about. I do want to say this as we enter the rooms for these lives. When you're asking your questions, please let me know which forgiveness or which relief are you referring to the title of this live stream is related to student loan forgiveness and so there's kind of two things that's going on inside of these conversations there are conversations around the one-time debt relief which is the 10k or the 20k and then there's also conversations around the public service loan forgiveness which is something that is completely separate from the one-time debt relief and also it is approaching the deadline for the limited waiver. So technically, you have 15 business days to take whatever action you need to take if you want to take advantage of the limited time waiver. And that's only for those who 
work in public service or who have direct loans or under this time you could potentially consolidate some loans into the direct loan in order to kind of get it. But again, that's situation based because it may not be beneficial to everybody to do that. And you have until October 31st to submit, consolidate, do whatever you need to do when it comes to this public service loan forgiveness application before that waiver expires. So that is 15 business days. I'm counting it by business days because that's when you'll be able to take some action on a business day. D, I thought the time was extended. You thought which time was it extended? Which time was extended? Hold on now. Nothing there. Let me see. I doubt that they extended the limited waiver. Yeah, that waiver is still October 31. So I don't know what type of extension you may be referring to. But it got to be in by 11.59 p.m. Eastern Time. 11.59 p.m. Eastern Time for the public service loan forgiveness. Only those who qualify and are eligible for the public service loan forgiveness is what I'm referring to as it relates to the limited time waiver. Okay, can you qualify for PSLF if you have 120 payments but not 10 years of government employment? So unfortunately, you got to have 10 years of service. So if you're still working with in your 10 years of service, if you worked in a nonprofit, Maybe you can kind of get that period too, but you have to have 10 years of service. You have to have 10 years of service plus 120 qualified payments. But I would still tell you to put, if, if you're already under PSLF, then make sure that you have, you know, your most recent forms and stuff in. Let me see. Y'all saying something about us extension. I don't see this. <laughs> Y'all making me nervous now. Whew. Okay, yeah, I don't I don't see what y'all talking about. All right. Is the one time debt relief based on last year's earnings income will exceed with this year's raise? So yeah, it's gonna be based on either your 2021 or 2020 annual income, is what the site says. But we will see once the application goes live in terms of what specifically they're going to ask for. So it's definitely not going to be your income now, it's gonna be based on your income during those periods where we had the financial impact, which, you know, which was when the pandemic started. So we, people were impacted in 2020 and 2021 financially, which is why they're basing it off of those two. And it could be one or the other, but we'll see when the application comes out. Did the application come out? No, it has not come out yet. It has not come out yet. It has not. Thank y'all so much for the hearts. Continue to share this out and invite people in. And thank you so much for the follows as well. The 10K, it's automatic forgiveness, right? So initially they were saying it's going to be automatic. I said this before in prior live streams that I've that I conducted here was that I personally have not seen anyone's records or any evidence of the one-time debt relief automatically being applied for to, for them. So I haven't seen it with my own eyes, so I can't vouch and say yes. But some people have said that they've already received it. These are people that I don't know, so I can't confirm and or deny. 
But what the Department of Education has clearly said on their website is that you should apply to make sure that you apply, even if it's supposed to be automatic, even if it's supposed to be automatic for those who they say they already have the data for, because the Department of Education may already have the income data for some people. And of course, we already know that they have all of their loan history and everything. I logged into my, I logged into my, even though I've paid off my student loans, I paid off my student loans in 2017. So I haven't had balances in a, in years, but I went into my student loan account just to see, like just, just to see, because I haven't been in there in so long. I mean, I, I haven't had a reason to, but I went in there and I was just like, wow, it literally shows you everything. It shows you all of your loan history. It shows you how much Pell Grants you received. Yes, I was a Pell Grant recipient. <laughs> I was a Pell Grant recipient. So it literally shows you everything. And it's really cool. So if you have not accessed your federal student aid account, which is your FSA ID account, I want to highly encourage you that you do because even if you no longer have federal loans even though you paid it off like me you can still have access to your data which is cool so the point that i was trying to make the department of education has said apply because they don't want to miss anybody they don't want to miss they don't want anybody to potentially miss out so put it in either way What's the difference between unsubsidized and subsidized? So the difference between subsidized and unsubsidized loans is basically that one is one has a greater benefit than the other. And when I say one has a greater benefit than the other, the subsidized loans are the loans whereby the government pays the interest that's accruing on your loans as opposed to unsubsidized, you got to pay it. So the difference between unsubsidized and subsidized is that the interest of course, is accruing, but it doesn't accrue for you, so you don't see it, but it's still being paid because the government is paying the interest for you if you have a subsidized loan. If you have an unsubsidized loan, then all of those interests, you're you're responsible for paying the interest. That's essentially what the difference is. There's probably some other stipulations, but that's the biggest thing that I can think of in terms of cost is that one, you pay the interest and the other one, you don't. Where is the application any word when it will be online? So I was just saying that they've changed the language on the website because it, at first it was saying early October, but now they've taken early away. So they're not really giving a date just yet. You're literally, your best bet is going to be opting in to receive the alerts. I've been sharing on several instances that the Department of Education has been encouraging folks to log into your FSA ID account update your settings and opt in to receive text message alerts or email alerts. So that way, as soon as the application goes live, you will be able to know. You could also, as an alternative, if you don't want to, for whatever reason, set up an FSA ID account, you can subscribe to the Department of Education's page and check the boxes related to the information that you want to be able to receive alerts on, which would be the one-time debt relief. That'll be the quickest and the fastest way, but I always, I've been encouraging folks to get your FSA ID account, set up the alert, and do it from there. So, and again, I don't know if it's going, more than likely, it's probably not going to be a forward-facing application, meaning you don't need to log in. I'm truly believing that you're probably going to need a login in order to fill out the form, but we're going to see because you need your login to fill out any other form. <laughs> you got to log in to do the consolidation. You got to log in to do the public service loan forgiveness forms. You got to log in. So more than likely, you're going to have to log into your FSA ID account to complete the one-time debt relief application once it's released. But I'm just saying based off of history, but we'll find out for sure once, once it, once it goes live. What did you say it has is too what did you say it's too late to consolidate for? So it's too late to consolidate for those who have federal family education loans that are commercially held because what was happening was people were consolidating their commercially held FFEL loans into a federal loan or direct loan so that they can be eligible for the one-time debt relief of 10k or 20k and because the bank or the lenders or the private industry they were going into an uproar because all of these people were refinancing literally they were 
consolidating their loans. And so with the privately held loans, they get paid that interest. They get paid that interest. It's technically like, you know, they own, they, they are the account owner, essentially. They are the loan originator, the loan or yeah, the loan originator at this point. And so because people were consolidating, yes, they're getting the money from the consolidation, but they're losing out on all of the interest for those who essentially had balances that are larger than $20,000 or $10,000 because they have now consolidated, which would mean they're no longer getting that business on whatever that loan was. And now the Department of Education or the, the federal government is because they're going to be earning the interest off of whatever the remaining balance is. And they're also going to be the private sector, private lenders. They're going to be losing out on the interest as a result of people getting all of their private, getting all of their FFEL loans. Let me be specific, getting all of their FFEL loans basically relieved if their balance is either $10,000 or less, or if their balance is $20,000 or less because they are a Pell Grant recipient. Let me know if that, if that clarified what you were asking. Biden application, come on yet? I just said no. Where do we apply for public service applications? So if you are a public servant, meaning you worked in public service, either for a federal, state, local, tribal government organization, or if you've worked for a 501c3 nonprofit organization, or if you've worked for a nonprofit organization that literally provides a qualifying service, which is one of the qualifying services that are listed on the application. I'm not going to run through them because I have a whole video pinned on my page. It has like 45,000 views. If you want to be able to look through to see what the application looks like, and you can see the sections that I'm talking about in terms of what nonprofits that do not have a 501c3 status but offer a qualifying service could be potential could be eligible for public service on forgiveness. So if you meet any of those, then you want to go to studentaid.gov forward slash P as in public, S as in service, loan L as in loan. <laughs> F as in forgiveness. So that's where you go. Studentaid.gov forward slash PSLF to submit your applications for public service on forgiveness, especially under this limited time waiver because you have less. You have 15 business days. Just put it like that. Because one, once Tuesday gets here, because tomorrow is, I think tomorrow is technically like a federal holiday. So they're, that's not considered a business day for them. So Tuesday, when Tuesday comes, then you're going to be down to 14 business days. So y'all better jump on it if you're trying to take advantage of the limited waiver. Ooh, somebody is salty in the comments, but we're not going to address that. I say whoever can get the relief, get the relief. I'm a person who paid off my student loans in full and I'm not salty. I'm giving y'all this information because I want you to be able to get any kind of relief that you are able to get and receive because I know how it is to be inundated in debt. Let me tell y'all another thing too. Let me go ahead and speak on this for one second because when I went into my FSA ID account, it t I told you guys, it shows you all of your loan details. It literally shows you everything. You can see your original loan dates. You can see it all. And when I started my debt elimination journey, I'm to the point where I've paid off almost a half a million dollars of debt solely by myself while managing two households, being a caregiver. Okay. And when I started my debt elimination journey, that's when I actually started counting what, what my debt amount was, like literally how much my balances were. Because prior to, I wasn't, I was just making my payments and, and spending all my money and just whatever. And when I had my epiphany to wake up and say, wow, I am making all of this money, but I don't have no money in the bank. That was my wake up call. And I had to go and find where my money was going and my money was all going to debt payments. And once I saw that, that changed the game for me. It was December 31st, 2015. It was a night I will never forget. And that night I had to say to myself, we're going into this new year. I need a whole new financial outlook. 
I do not want to be in the same space where I am essentially not being a good steward over my own financial resources when I'm a good steward over millions and billions of dollars of other people's resources. Are you all following me? Can I just be transparent on this evening? Thank you. So I did this comparison and I made the decision. I was like, you know what? I need to find out where my money is going. So when I saw that it was going to all of these debt payments, I said, well, gosh, how much do I owe? And so I went in and I looked at all of my accounts. I had student loans. I had mortgages. I had car loans. I had credit cards galore. I had car loans, personal loans. I had every kind of loan you could imagine with the exception of payday loans because that was something that I knew to stay away from because the interest rates are just absurd when it comes to payday loans. It's just it just doesn't make financial sense. But I know I understand that some people do have to use it for desperate measures, but just understand that that's like predatory lending at that point. It's like predatory lending. But nonetheless, I made the decision and I saw how much debt I was in. When I started tracking my debt balances on my student loans by themselves, consolidated all together because I had multiple loans. Of course, you know, there's multiple loans within a loan. And my student loan balances at the time I started tracking, it was $80,000. It was 80 something thousand dollars when I put my number together to see how much loans, how much student loans I had. And this was back in December 31st or January 1st, probably January 1st, 2016, when I actually started to do all of the tracking. And I saw how much debt I had, I had put myself in between education and taking care of my mom and properties and this and that and the third it was just a whole lot and I looked at my federal student aid account because it still shows my original balances do you all know that the total amount of loans that I had taken out while I was in school was a hundred and twelve thousand dollars it was like a hundred and twelve nine hundred and sixteen or something like that I might have took a picture let me see Oh, maybe I didn't. Maybe I didn't. Maybe I didn't. Let's see if I can find it. Oh, no. Maybe I didn't. Okay, I, I thought I might have sent it to, you know, airdropped it to my laptop, but I didn't. So it's in my phone and I'm not going to pull it up. But it was 112 and, and 600 and something. I know that for sure. So if you take 112 six whatever or if you just round it down 112 and subtract the 80,000 from when I actually started tracking during that window I had only paid down $32,000 of my own student loans before I started tracking it and it had been years it had been years since I had finished school and when I tell you it was well over 10 years well over 10 years by the time I actually started to look so can you imagine it take me it it taking me over ten years to just pay off thirty two thousand dollars of student loan debt, and when I started tracking it, I was still at eighty. I was floored. I was floored, and with the aggressiveness that the aggressive approach that I took, I paid them loans off in like a year and a half. A year and a half. Just by being intentional with my resources, just by being strategic around how much interest was accruing on the existing debt that I had. I'm, I'm going to tell you something. I don't want to toot my own horn, but I'm definitely a strategist and I definitely know how to move some things around to make it work because essentially that's what I do on my job. Well, that's what I have been doing on my job. I work, you know, we don't need to go there, but that's essentially what I do. So I'm very analytical. So I know how to move things around and figure the pieces out to cut costs as much as possible. So I had to take my professional hat and I had to put it on my own personal financial life. I had to put it on my own personal financial life. So nonetheless, I wanted to share that because some people are in the comments making statements around just pay like the rest of them or whatever the case may be. I get it. I get it. But I'm also for advocating for people to get the assistance that 
they are entitled to as a result of the benefit that has been shared. Amen. Okay. Okay. I have plus loans is the 10,000 automatic or where do I need to apply? Again, I was just sharing that. Just wait until the application comes out. So you just apply anyway. I haven't consolidated, but I have all my loans under Fed loans. Mohila, do I have to consolidate? So it depends on what kind of loans you have. So if you, and it depends on what program you're trying to get forgiveness under. So if you are public service loan forgiveness, if you are qualified under that, I don't know. But if you are, then you may need to consolidate if you want to take advantage of the limited time waiver. But if this is just for the one-time debt relief, you don't have to consolidate at all. You don't have to consolidate at all. The only reason why they're bringing up consolidation conversations, and I think it's because people are getting the two mixed up between public service loan forgiveness and this one-time debt relief because they, they are completely different. And I think some people are hearing some conversations around consolidate and then they're getting it confused with the one-time debt relief. Which is why when I'm doing my live streams, I'm trying to be very clear on the language that I use. So anytime you hear me say one-time debt relief or anytime you hear me say debt relief, I'm talking about the 10K or the 20K. Anytime you hear me talk about forgiveness, more than likely I'm talking about public service on forgiveness or I could be talking about teacher forgiveness, which I have my video series that's going to be coming forward on those. So just stay tuned for those for those who are teachers. I heard it was until December 31st. What was until December 31st? What was until December 31st? Not public service loan forgiveness. What's until December 31st? The only thing that's until December 31st is the extended repayment pause. So yeah, this website says that this waiver ends October 31st, 2002. 11.59 p.m. Eastern Time. And they said, I will, let me show y'all. I can't make this stuff up. I was just telling y'all it's a completely different thing. I'm just trying to tell y'all the truth. Let me turn this around. Uh, flip camera. Okay. This is the public service loan forgiveness. You guys see that? The waiver expires October 31st. What does it say? Public service loan forgiveness is different from the one-time student loan debt relief of up to $20,000. Public service loan forgiveness is a program for people who work in public service in federal, state, tribal or local government or for a nonprofit organization. Didn't I just say this to you all? <laughs> Didn't I just say this to you all? So public service on forgiveness is completely different from the one-time debt relief. Please do not misconstrue the two. Okay. Okie dokie. Okie doke. Okay, I have a question. Okay, what's your question? Anitra, go ahead, drop it in. Ooh. Okay, this act ends on December 31st. Let's see if you don't know. Oh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. So that's the repayment pause. So yeah, that's definitely December 31st. It's been extended to December 31st. So yeah, that's the repayment pause. Okay, let me go back. Ooh. Okay, I'm just going to start from the bottom because it dropped to the bottom. <laughs> it dropped to the bottom. It was like 99 comments. So I apologize if, if I missed it. I don't think I'm going to be able to scroll all the way back up. Okie dokie. Are there, are the student loan relief forms available already? No, they're not. 
any information on the perm plus loan what information are you referring to so there's not a specific relief or there's not a specific forgiveness program for parent plus loans if you are eligible for the relief based on your income and the fact that you have a federal loan then by all means if you have a parent plus loans if you have a parent plus loan then it could be eligible for the one-time relief if you are a public servant meaning you work in public service it's it's kind of sticky it, it you you could potentially do it but you want to look to see if it's going to benefit you if you do it that's that's the thing i worked for the county for five years and my loans were not eligible what kind of loan do you have so that would be my question to you what kind of loan do you have because Public service loan forgiveness is only eligible for direct loans. So if you worked for it in the past, if you still work there, I'm not sure if you still work there or not. But if you have a loan that is a non-direct loan, then this is where the limited waiver can come into play for you, depending on the type of loan that you had and depending on if you already have payments that you've made because when it comes to the Perkins loans and the FFEL loans, if you consolidate them into a direct loan, then they can be eligible for the public service loan forgiveness. And when you consolidate it into a direct loan, you won't lose the payments that you made, the payment counts that you made towards those. But that's only under this limited time waiver time. Will loan cancel will loan consolidation cancel my pending case with DeVry loan cancellation? That's a good question. That I don't know. I'm gonna look that up because that's a good one. I'm gonna look that one up. Let's see what we find. We'll do this live in action. Okay. If you have direct loans related to your approved claim, the federal, can we just read this together? Because you know one thing about me, child. I'm going to find me some answers. I'll be researching stuff. That's what I do. Okay. So here's what we have. Let's see if this is going to give us the answer that we're looking for, though. So if you have direct loans related to your approved claim. So this is for those who have approved claims related to bars of fence. You see that up there? Email to approve bars of fence claimant. If you have direct loans related to your approved claim... The federal student direct loans you received for the programs of study related to your approved claim will be discharged. The department will notify you or your loan servicer when the when of the approved forgiveness. And I'm just going to say when we say forgiveness, we're just going to say bars defense relief. And your forgiveness should be completed within the next 60 to 120 days. Your servicer will send you more details about the forgiveness, including which loans will be forgiven. If your account has no other outstanding balances and your claim is not limited by statute of limitation, in addition to your loan forgiveness, you may receive a refund for prior payments made on direct loans related to your approved claim. If your claim is limited by statute of limitations, you may not receive a refund of prior payments that you made on the loans that have been forgiven. You will receive more information on that determination. If you have federal family education loans and or Perkins loans related to your approved claim, then, and you are eligible for loan consolidation. So boom, we, we can right answer your question. And you are eligible for loan consolidation. You must consolidate those loans into a direct consolidation loan in order to obtain forgiveness for the outstanding balance of those loans. Do you hear that? Do you hear that? So my question to you is when you consolidate it, do you did you consolidate it into a direct consolidation loan? 
More than likely you did, but just confirm. Unless you consolidated those loans, the department cannot forgive them. You may receive or you will receive a future notification providing steps to take in order to complete the loan consolidation and proceed with the discharge. Boom! Bars defense to repayment does not apply to private student loans. Therefore, nothing in this notice applies to private student loans that you may have. Come on, they just, they just dropped the whole word. I think that answers your question. I think that answered your question. I'm so excited, you two guys. I have like, I have a subscriber thing now. So if you want to subscribe to the DDTV, you can and you can get the DDTV gems. I got so excited about that. I was like, oh, that's so cool. TikTok is just doing all kinds of things. Okie dokie. Ooh. Um, I consolidated with Mohila. It says my loan is in good standing. Okay. When will I be able to make a payment? Well, if, I mean, if you want to make, if you want to make volunteer payments, you can, but technically if you're under the repayment pause, you don't have to make a payment. And because loans aren't, I'm sorry, interest is not being accrued at this time because your interest rates would have been and should have been set to zero during this entire COVID-19 time. So if you are in a situation where you, you want to make a payment, by all means, if, if you want to, you can. But that'll be, it'll more than likely be in the new year once the repayment pause lifts. And we don't know if they're going to give another grace period or not to give you, you know, 30 days or 60 days to start repayment or if it's just going to start immediately January 2023. So, Whew. okay. I have three daughters with direct plus loans. I have no idea what to do and I keep missing your lives. Well, you landed on the right channel at the right time in the right live stream. So my question to you would be, number one, which relief are you trying to qualify for? Because you can qualify for both if you if you meet the criteria for both. You can get both the forgiveness and you can get the one-time debt relief. You can get both. It just depends on where you are income-wise related to the one-time debt relief. And it also depends on who you work for and who you have to work for in terms of Working in public service, whether it be through government or nonprofit. I have 66, 900 and parent plus government loan. Will I qualify for help? It's based on your income. So it depends on how much you make. If you make less than $125,000 in your tax filing status is single or head of household, then yes, you will qualify. If you make less than, or when I say make, I'm, I'm going to say your annual income, which is what will be reported on your tax returns. But if, you're, if your filing status is head of household or Murray filing jointly, then 250000 less than 250000 is the barrier for you to be able to be eligible for the Biden relief. <sighs> Thank you all for becoming top viewers. This is so cool. <laughs> got it. Just got on. Need your help. Okay, drop your questions in. This why this time is here. Drop your questions in. Direct loan subsidized graduate repayment. It said it's saying consider an income driven repayment plan. Why? So if if this is for public service loan forgiveness purposes, again, it would Theoretically, because you have to be on a qualifying repayment plan in order to be eligible for public service on forgiveness. That's one of the things. One of the stipulations that they're counting for this limited time waiver is that 
it doesn't matter what repayment plan you were on when you were making your other qualified periods, while you were making your other qualified payments or whatever those qualified periods were for them to count. So if you consolidate, yes, you have to be on an IDR. That's one of the stipulations and one of the requirements for the PSLF as it relates to direct loans because PSLF is only a direct loan benefit, basically. It's basically a direct loan benefit program only. So, yeah. You got to be on a qualified plan and the qualified plan would be the IDR and also some, the other four that I mentioned that may fall under temporary expanded public service loan forgiveness because the temporary expanded public service loan forgiveness allows for those other standard repayment types to count as well as long as you know it's under TS TE PSLF. If my loan is below $2,000, how can I get it deleted? I tried disability. It's no good. I mean, if it's less than $2,000, you might be eligible for the relief. Now, if it's private, I can't help you there because <laughs> we just read on this thing. Nothing related to these federal programs are for private loans, period. I'm having a hard time understanding which one is the 20,000. So the 20,000 or the 10,000 is the one time debt relief. So anytime you hear somebody saying something about 10K or 20K, just think one time Biden help, <laughs> like somebody else said in the chat. So even though they're using the terms interchangeably, it's, it's really looking at, you know, the, I guess the website or the, I don't know. I don't know how to explain it, but I think it's pretty clear. Whenever you hear, hear 20K or 10K, just think the one-time debt relief and then public service on forgiveness. And you know that that's something completely different. I mean, if they forgive it one way, why does it matter? I'm not understanding that question. Maybe I missed the part. So what's the difference between direct and non-direct? It's just essentially the loan type. So when it comes to federal loans, they have different loan programs. So you have to think about these funds that are being used to award student loans, to award Pell Grants, to award all of this stuff. It comes from a government program. And so whatever the name of that program is, is what the loan type is going to be called. So, or not really the loan type, but the loan program is going to be called. So you have the direct loan programs, which is all of the stuff that's under William D. Ford. And then you have the Perkins, which is really sunset because you, because you can't take out a Perkins loan now because it, it doesn't exist. Same thing with FFEL. You can't take out a brand new one now, but those who had already had them in the past, and again, with FFEL, those were originally backed by the government. So it was it was the private banks essentially issuing the money or whatever, issuing the issuing the student loans, but they were backed by the government. So if you defaulted as a borrower, then they would get their money from the government. But what happened when things started to kind of shuffle and they sunsetted the, the program the Department of Education ended up buying some of the FFEL loans back to help the private banks with their liquidity because they were having liquidity issues as a result of that. Maybe people defaulting or whatever the case may be. So they bought back some of the loans. So some people who have FFEL loans, some of them are private and some of them are managed by the Department of Education because the Department of Education bought them back. So that's where the stuff is coming from, you know, the distinction is coming from, but it's based on program essentially. So that's really all that it is. So on the PSLF form, do you add your current employer from a different time frame? 
So this is a great question. So this is one of the reasons why it's going to be imperative to utilize the PSLF help tool, because if you have multiple employers that you're trying to get your coverage in terms of the, empl the qualified employees who you work for, then if you fill out the template, or if you fill out the form just from the website, then you're going to have to kind of make shift and keep printing out multiple section threes or filling out multiple section threes in order to get all of the forms that you need for your employer. Whereas if you use the help tool, it will generate all of the section three forms that you need to print out and send to your employer automatically. Because when you go into the tool, it's, you're putting, you're selecting the employer, you're putting the employee information and you're putting in the EIN, you're putting in all of this stuff. So you're filling out all of the information inside of your FSA ID account. <laughs> inside the FSA ID account. And then once you finish, it'll download or it'll give you an icon to download it. And then when you download it, it'll basically be the section one that has like the certification piece. And then it has you checking the box and it has you signing the certification statement. And then it has the section three, which would be the next page, which will have the multi, the employers. And so that section three, if you put in five entries for employers, then they're going to, then that download is going to generate five section threes. So it'll just print out in one form. So you have five section threes and then it'll go, you know, with the remainder of the sections or whatever. So it's easier to do it inside of the, the tool, honestly, if you're doing public service loan forgiveness. But to answer your question, do you add your current employer or from a different time frame? So you, you need to add however many you need to add, <laughs> any eligible employer that you have, you want to include them in the application for public service loan forgiveness and utilize the PSLF help tool to help generate the pages for you in a cleaner way. <sighs> okay, let me go down. Let, let me go down. Okay, it has me so confused. When I go on the site, I qualify for 20 because of income and federal. So if you qualify, then you should be good. I don't, I don't, I don't see what's confusing about it. I'm going to pull it up right now. And we're going to look at this again. Thank y'all so much for the likes and shares. I appreciate it. And that's another thing. I realized what I wanted to do with tonight's live stream was for you guys to literally have your laptops and you start looking and doing whatever it is that you need to do to navigate this process. So maybe I'll make it clear for the next time. So y'all can do it together. But this is the one time student, student debt relief page. You can get up to twenty thousand in federal student loan based on your income, and you only get up to twenty if you were a Pell Grant recipient. So this is the criteria which we've talked about and we've discussed several times. I was just sharing with you guys less than one hundred and twenty-five if you're single or married filing separately, and then two hundred and fifty, less than two hundred and fifty if you are head of household or married filing jointly, because it'll be based on your your household number. Online form will be available October 2022. These are the steps to check if you're eligible. If you receive the Pell Grant in college and you meet the income threshold, you're going to get up to 20000 If you did not receive a Pell Grant, you're going to get up to 10000 You want to log into your student aid account, which is, which is your FSA ID, what does it say? Sign up to receive alerts so that you can know when the application goes live because it is not available yet. Or you can subscribe to the Department of Education's page to get email notifications. The application will be available online in October 2022. We will share updates on this page and we'll send you an email when the application is available and you have until December 31st of next year to get your application in. So this is pretty clear. <laughs> this is pretty clear. 
Again, if you want to know if you were ever a Pell Grant recipient, you got to log into your FSA ID account because it will tell you. It will tell you. And I, I've been able to confirm that my Pell Grant history definitely showed up. I just told you guys the story. Here's another piece that they're saying. If your Pell Grant was prior to 1994, then that information may not display in your student aid account. However, you're still going to get the full benefit because they have the record. They still have the record in their system. It just may not display when you log into your profile. So it doesn't matter. It's, as long as you ever received a Pell Grant, you're eligible for the 20, up to 20. Okay. Here we go. Y'all keep asking about Perm Plus. I already explained it, but I'm going to let you, let you know. If I have a Perm Plus loan and my child received a Pell Grant, can my child get $20,000 in debt relief? And can the $20,000 in debt relief be applied to the, Pell, to the Perm Plus loan? That answer is no. So remember I said this before that it's based on you as the borrower if you were a Pell Grant recipient, then you can receive up to $20,000. But if your child was a Pell Grant recipient, then technically they weren't the borrower of the Parent Plus loan because you took out the loan. The loan is under your social security number. So the only way that you would get up to twenty dollars is if you yourself had your own loan that you had taken out or you yourself applied for federal aid and you were a Pell Grant recipient. And look, it's saying right here, if the parent, if the parent also received the Pell Grant, if the parent also received the Pell Grant for their own studies, then the parent may be eligible for up to 20000 in relief on their loans. Otherwise, the parent borrower will be eligible for up to ten. That's very clear. That's very clear. Okay. Y'all just saw my brain dump wall. That's my strategy wall over there that I just showed y'all. <laughs> okay. Let's see. Oh, these questions go by quick. The plus loan was recently added. Originally, DOE wasn't including them. As far as I'm concerned, as far as I'm concerned, for the one-time debt relief, the parent plus was on there because I have a video that showed it on the website that they were definitely on there. Let me see. Let me scroll back up. They might the hopefully they, they I don't think they took it down. There you go. Yeah, because this was always up there. Let me show y'all. This was always up there. This was up there from day one. <laughs> when this page went live, this was up there. I even did this demo on my YouTube page. So Parent Plus was always up there. These are the loans that are eligible for the one time relief. Undergraduate and graduate direct loans, Perm Plus and Grad Plus loans, consolidation loans where the original underlying loans were dispersed prior to June 30 or on or before June 30, 2022, FFEL loans that are held by the Department of Education, and then Perkins loans that are held by the Department of Education. And then defaulted loans, whether they are E, Department of Education held or commercially service they can be only if they're defaulted okay all right 
Are there any other questions? Are there any other questions? No, the application is not available. That website is studentaid.gov forward slash debt relief. And then when you get to that page, you're going to click on one-time cancellation or one-time student loan debt relief, and it's going to take you to that URL. The URL is too long because it has all these dashes in it. So it's just easier for you to go to studentaid.gov forward slash debt relief. Click on the very first link that you're going to see in the paragraph, and it'll take you to this page that has all of the details. If you have both federal and Pell Grant loans, we'll apply to both. Well, number one, Pell Grant is not a loan. <laughs> Pell Grant is a grant. So Pell Grants, you do not have to pay back. Pell Grants is what you receive because of the income that you had at the time that you applied or that your parents had at the time that you applied for federal student aid. So whenever you did your FAFSA, that determines what type of aid you qualify for. And so that could be Pell Grant, that could be loans, that could be work study, that could be any of the other stuff that's eligible as a, as a form of aid that you can get. But grants is a grant and you do not have to pay it back. So if you have federal loans and you have Pell Grants, for the one-time debt relief, if you meet the income criteria, then yes, you'll be eligible for up to $20,000. So that'll definitely be an advantage to you. But if you are not, a, if you were not a Pell Grant recipient, regardless, then your maximum will be up to, up to 10,000 federal loans. Okay, y'all want to see the website? Let me just screenshot this then. Okay, y'all. This is the URL. You see how long it is? That's why I said it's easier to just go to studentaid.gov debt relief altogether. But it'll take you to this page. It'll take you to this page. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> okay. <Whew>. Gosh. <laughs> what? was at the bottom what was at the bottom on the page i was just on uh i can show you if you want me to show you again you wanted to know what was at the bottom Maybe you want to see the loan types. I can show you guys again, but I I have a video on this, but I'll go ahead and show it again. That's what y'all want to see. So this is what was at the bottom. I think that's what you were asking me about. So it's basically the same thing that I was explaining, the types of loans. So remember, I was telling you guys about the different loan programs. So one loan program type is the William D. Ford Federal Direct Loan Program. So that's one loan type. And this is where the public service loan forgiveness falls under this loan type. Then the other program loan type was the federal family education loan. Another program type is the federal Perkins loan. So, and then they have the defaulted loans, but the defaulted could fall under any federal loan that you have defaulted. So hopefully that's what you wanted to see. So what does this mean? Let's read this last paragraph. This means that subsidized loans, so remember I was telling you guys subsidized loans means that the government is paying the interest on your loans for you and you don't have to. 
Unsubsidized loans is where you have to pay the interest on those loans. So the, so the interest is accruing if you have an unsubsidized loan. Parent plus loans qualify. Graduate plus loans that are held by the Department of Education qualify. They're eligible. Loan consolidations are also eligible for relief as long as the underlying loans that were consolidated were held by the Department of Education and were dispersed on or before June 30th, 2022. Consolidation loans comprised of any FFEL or Perkins loans not held by the Department of Education are also eligible as long as the borrower, oops, as long as the borrower applied for consolidation before September 29th, 2022. So this was what I was talking about people consolidating to try to take advantage of the one-time debt relief that they had to consolidate no at least by September 28th because September 29th if you consolidated on September 29th then you will not get the relief you will not get the one-time relief and that's if you consolidated your FFEL that are commercially held or your Perkins loans that are commercially held. Understood. Understood. Oh, y'all, that's been an hour. <laughs> I don't think I could do two hours tonight because I'm still trying to recoup. My body still needs to recoup. But we're going to push and serve. We're going to push and serve. So people are getting confused. Yes, people are getting confused. It's doing some debt forgiveness for those who cover on. Can I have my FFEO loan payments refunded that I that have been paid during this COVID forbearance? Depends on if it was commercially held or not. Or rather if it was department held or not. I doubt you're going to get anything back from the private sector. I, I mean, if it was commercially held, I doubt it. I thought the phones were not out yet. They're not out yet. I was just showing you guys the site to get clear on the criteria because people said people was indicating in the chat that they were confused. So the website you just showed, is that where you go to set alert notifications? Yes, you can definitely go there. If you go there, it's going to take you to the hyperlink of where you can subscribe to the Department of Education's page. And it's also going to give you the hyperlink to the FSAID account so that you can either log in if you already have one or create an account if you don't. It takes less than five minutes to create your account. The only thing that will take some time is the verification process because essentially they, of course, they have to go through their own verification. So if you're just setting up an account for the first time, I think they have to like cross reference the data with the Social Security Administration or something like that. And it can take a couple of days to get the confirmation back from them that they've been able to successfully verify you. And then once they verify you, then you could, I guess, log in. I believe, I believe. Does that include Navient or Nailnet? When you are talking about your loan servicer, when anything related to the debt relief, anything related to public service loan forgiveness, it's not about who your loan servicer is. It's about what kind of loan you have. <laughs> so I will be focused on if you look at your loan details and it says Department of Education or if it says direct, if it says any, anything that says Department of Ed, or if you log into your FSA ID account because your FSA ID account is only going to show you federal loans. So if you really want to know what loans are federal that you have, or if you have a qualifiable type of loan, then you might want to check your FSA ID account because it's going to tell you all of your loan details. It's going to tell you the exact kind of loan you have. It's going to tell you 
everything. <laughs> it's going to give you the description. It's going to tell you if it's unsubsidized. It's going to tell you if it's subsidized. It's going to tell you if you consolidate it. It's going to tell, it's going to tell you everything. It's even going to tell you the original loans that you've paid off as a result of a consolidation. It's going to be in there. It's going to be in there. PSLF question, must you be in an income-driven status to qualify? So under these limit, so I want to say under this limited time waiver, they are lifting a lot of the restrictions. So if you work for an eligible employer, my recommendation to you would be to submit a form. If you work for an eligible employer and you've looked at your loan types, you've looked at whether or not if you have direct loans, you've looked at whether if any of your loans were Perkins, you've looked at if any of your loans were FFEL, and you see that they you were making payments on those loans, and those those are those are the types of loans that can be eligible for public service loan forgiveness. And so with that, you would need to consolidate though in order to take advantage of that, but you got to do that by October 31st. So under this limited waiver, they're saying that regardless of your repayment, yeah, regardless of your repayment status, as long as you are under a qualified, basically have a qualified loan type and you're doing it under this limited waiver, then you'll be fine. Matter of fact, I'm going to, we finna read it off. They got a breakdown. I promise y'all. I'm just, I'm just repeating myself because it's right here on them. But we're going to go through this. How to see if you qualify for the limited waiver. This is the limited waiver. This is only for PSLF people. Only for PSLF. The limited waiver refers to the limited changes Two, the Public Service Loan Forgiveness Program rules that allow borrowers to receive credit for past periods of repayment that would otherwise not qualify for PSLF. This opportunity ends October 31st, 2022. So if you are new to PSLF and want some background information, you can go there. But if you if you're already if you are if you already sure that you're qualified, they're telling you just to apply now. So to see if you qualify for the limited time waiver, you got to make sure that you have at least one direct loan and you have to at least have one approved PSLF form on file. If this does not apply to you, you got to see the options under step two. So where do you find out what kind of loans you have? You're going to do this by logging into your FSA ID account so that you can view your aid summary. You're going to scroll down until you are able to see the loan breakdown section. In the loan breakdown section, it's going to tell you your exact type of loans, even if you've consolidated them. I just, <laughs> I literally just said that. Even if you consolidate, you're going to see it all. If you expand the view loans and select view loan details, you're going to see more detailed information for that particular loan. Direct loans begin with the word direct. Federal Family Education Loan Program loans start with FFEL. Perkins loan include the word Perkins in the name. Parent Plus loans are not eligible under the limited waiver. But there, there's a workaround for that. Meaning when they say Parent Plus loans aren't eligible, they're saying if you consolidate a Parent Plus loan into a direct loan, any payments that you made on that Parent Plus loan will not roll over and count as a part of the periods that you need is what they're saying, essentially. But it, once you consolidate, you're literally going to have one loan. You're going to have one loan, one direct loan. So take action, consolidate or apply or wait, depending on your situation. If you have at least one outstanding FFEL program loan or federal Perkins loan or 
other uncommon older federal loans. You need to find out if your employer is eligible. You need to consolidate your FFEL loans and Perkins loan into a direct loan by October 31st, 2022. You cannot receive credit for time and repayment if you do not consolidate and submit the form by that date. Submit the form using the help tool so that it can generate all the pages that you need, especially if you have multiple employers. You got to have your employers sign it. They got to sign it before you send it to Mohila. And if they can't, if they're refusing to sign, there is a box that you check that says employer refuses to sign. If you have a direct loan, but you've never submitted a form certifying your employment, you got to make sure that your employer is eligible and then you just got to complete the form. If you have a direct loan and you've already submitted an employer certification form, or if you've already submitted a public service loan forgiveness form, then you need to submit a PSLF form only if you had some but not all of your employment certified or if your previously submitted EFC, which is your employer certification form or your public service loan forgiveness forms were denied. Submit the form and then wait. So when you submit your form, you want to make sure that you're covering all of the periods that you need to cover. All of the periods that you need to cover. So what change, I think, is what I really want to show you all. Summary of changes. Here we go. Summary of changes. We just talked about that. Past repayment, past periods of repayment will count whether or not If you made the payment on time for the full amount or under a qualifying repayment plan. So this is what we're talking about, the repayment plan type. So some people are having questions around, oh, IDR or not this or not that. So if you made partial payments, if you made late payments, if you made full payments on any repayment plan, They're saying that those past periods are going to count. That's what they're saying. Forbearance periods of 12 consecutive months or more will count. Forbearance periods of 36 cumulative months or more will count under the waiver. In fall 2022, education will begin to make count adjustments to include these periods. So some of you may have already started to see your adjustments, but some of you may not. Because it can take some time for them to process it. Forbearance periods provided by the COVID-19 emergency relief flexibilities are not included toward these months. Months spent in deferment before 2013 will count under the waiver. Additionally, education will continue economic hardship deferment on or after January 1, 2013. ED will apply these periods of deferment for Uh, in the fall and periods of default and in-school deferment do not qualify. Okay. Anything else? One time limited rule for qualifying payments. Any prior period of payment will count as a qualifying payment, regardless of the loan program, regardless of the payment plan and whether or not you made the payment in full or on time. This change will apply to borrowers with direct loans, those who already have consolidated into a direct loan program, and for those who consolidated into a direct direct loan program submitting their consolidation application on or before 11.59 p.m. Eastern Time on October 31st, 2022. Okay? Periods of repayment on, on Parent plus loans are not eligible under the limited waiver, but you can see below for more information on how this might or might not affect you. This is the piece that I was talking about how is a workaround. All right, let me see. This is the summary of the PSLF requirements that have been waived. Can y'all see this? Can y'all see this? Mm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. 
So the un the un unchanged requirements is that you still have to make 120 qualified payments. You still have to have that or the equivalent. You still have to be employed by a government nonprofit organization that's a 501c3 or other nonprofit organization that provides a qualifying service. You still have to work for time for that employer at least 30 hours a week. You still have to have direct loans or consolidated into a direct loan. And then you still have to have certified and qualifying employment periods for the, the periods or the credits that you're seeking to have applied towards public service loan forgiveness. So essentially, that's 10 years of service. This is essentially the same as 10 years of service because your periods essentially are, have to be 120. So that's 10 years. Y'all want help? Here's where you can go for help. Use the help tool. Go to Mohila. Read the article. And read this other article. I'm not about to read it to y'all because <laughs> you have you know where to find the site and you could look it up. Let me see if this answers any of the questions that y'all had. That's a good one. Why can I get credit for payments now? Okay, so yeah, I told y'all that under the Heroes Act. Yeah, I talked about that already. Why do I have to consolidate my loans? Because, because it's a direct loan program. And if you want to take advantage of it, let's see. This is a good one. Employers not in the database. All right. Got a letter. So here's a good one. They said you're going to get multiple letters. So if you if you just got your loan transferred over to Mohila, then you're probably going to get more than one letter, especially once they start doing accounts. Okay, y'all. Was that helpful? Was that helpful? My student loans have been transferred to so many different companies. I have no idea who has them now. Well, you'll know if you log into your FSA ID account. <laughs> you'll know. Log into your FSA ID account and that'll give you your whole history. I got a letter from Mohila saying that if you want for, in forbearance, you can't apply. So you probably can't, you probably can't apply and say that you're ready for forgiveness. So if you did, then that means you check the second or the third box or you check the second box saying that you believe that you qualify right now for public service loan forgiveness. And it could be that they're still trying to make the updates based on the limited waiver revisions. So if you were in forbearance for more than 12 consecutive months, then those periods will count. If you were in forbearance for 36 more, 36 or 36 months or more cumulative, meaning it does not have to be consecutive, but if you reach 36 months or more forbearance, then those periods will count. <sighs> Okay, everybody, it's been almost 90 minutes and I'm exhausted. So I'm getting ready to go lay down because I have to work tomorrow. I had to work today. They have not made the PSLF waiver easy. I've been trying since January. I know, just be a little patient. Just be a little patient. Hopefully, if you've done all of your parts and you got everything in and you covered all of your employment periods and you did everything that you were supposed to do, then prayerfully, all will work out. I had, I had, yeah, I had one of my YouTube subscribers and subscribe to my YouTube page if you have not done so. The link is in my bio. If you head over to my page, you'll be able to subscribe to my YouTube. But one of my YouTube subscribers actually applied for the relief earlier this year, 
not the relief, excuse me, apply for public service on forgiveness under the limited waiver in the beginning of this year. And it took them about four or five months, maybe, maybe four or five or six months. Got that letter in the mail, 165000 forgiven. <laughs> 165000 forgiven. Do you have to make payments on you? Ooh, I'm so sorry, you guys. Ooh, my body is getting ready to take me out. <laughs> All this lack of sleep is catching up on me. It's definitely catching up on me. Do you have to make payments on your loans in order for, for them to be forgiven? For the one-time debt relief, it doesn't matter what your repayment status is. It doesn't matter your school status. It doesn't matter for the 10K or the 20K. The only thing that matters is your income. And then for the public service loan forgiveness, it... It may or may not because some people are on income-driven repayment plans where their required payment is $0. So if your required payment is $0, then that means what? You never made a payment. But there's some people that has been on a IDR that has a zero payment requirement for 10 years. And this is going to benefit them as long as they've been working with a qualified employer during that time. So if you know that this is you, you definitely want to take advantage of making sure that you get your forms in related to that. I have been a federal employee since 2013. Would I qualify? Yes, you will. Yes, you will qualify for public service loan forgiveness. And you almost had 10 years of service. So one more year, once you get to 10 years, then, then yeah. But if you have not submitted a public service loan forgiveness form, you want to make sure that you get it in. Please, by all means, go look at the video that I did to walk you through the form. Go to these links and these websites that I've been sharing with you on where to find it. And raise your hand for public service loan forgiveness is what the Department of Education has been saying. So get your form in by October 31st, 2021. But first, you need to decide whether or not if you need to consolidate. Because I don't know what kind of loans you have. And even if you have multiple direct loans, it still may benefit you to consolidate. So that way you won't have multiple PSLF dates that are being forgiven at different times. Because remember, each loan that you have basically starts the clock. And we know that when we went to school, multiple loans, a loan is dispersed every time we had to pay for a semester. So we that's why you have multiple loans within a loan. And... That loan disbursement drives the origination date of it. So most people are consolidating all of their direct loans into one because it'll just be one loan and then you won't lose all of those periods that where you probably was making payments on. And then once you hit 120 on that consolidated loan, then shoot, it's going to be gone. Our parent plus loans, not forgiven. I think I just explained that. I'm in the process of submitting now. Would I select 120 qualified payments? So here's one thing, too, that they said, and I'm glad you asked this question as you're working on it. So come on, kudos to you for doing the work live in the room. But they made it very clear. If you are not 100% sure that you made 120 payments, do not check box two. Do not check box two. So unless you know for sure, and then you shouldn't be checking box two anyway because you don't have 10 years of service yet. So I would go with checking the first box so that they can tell you how close you are. And once you get to that, once you get to that point, then it will be forgiven. But you don't want to miss out on getting all of these extra payment accounts that you can get. That you can get. So you have to look at your situation to see you know, we, where you are. I'm on PSLF and IDR. I don't know if I still have to apply for the limited waiver. So I was just sharing that the only time you would have to submit another form is if you're not covering all periods of your employment. I had just pulled it up on the site where it said, if you already submitted a form, 
and you already know that you work for an eligible employer, your check would need to be to make sure that the last time you submitted a public service loan forgiveness form, how long ago was that? And you want to make sure that you have a public service loan forgiveness form or an employer certification form. It's all lumped into one. So the application that you pull up right now is going to be both the certification and it's going to be the, the, yeah, the, yeah, it's going to be the certification and the employer piece. But when you, when you, um, I just lost my train of thought. Yes. Yes. When you, when you submit your form, you want to make sure that you're covering all of your employment periods. So check to see when was the last time that you submitted a form and you want to make sure that it is as up to date as possible and that you're not missing any prior employers that you might have worked for that would have been able to get you eligible for public service loan forgiveness, even though you may not still be with them anymore. This is a time where the limited waiver is taking a huge benefit or making a huge benefit for people because you can go and get your form signed from people who you work for in the past. And even though you no longer work for them, you can still get forgiven under this limited waiver period. I work for a nonprofit in. Whew, I work for a nonprofit for six years, but haven't for the last year. What will, what will happen to the six? Well, for public service loan forgiveness purposes, if you don't put in a public service loan forgiveness form now to get those six years to kind of work to your benefit, then it'll just be basically sitting there. But if you if you if you plan on going back to a nonprofit or if you plan on working in government or any one of the qualifying services and you're willing to put in another four years and another four years of qualified payments, then by all means, feel free to raise your hand for public service loan forgiveness, but just note that it won't be forgiven until you meet the criteria. So if I consolidate now, it resets the clock. No, it does not. It does not reset the clock if you consolidate because they base it off of your original loans that were consolidated and that question will be for the one time debt relief but it does not reset the clock you are a blessing thank you oh you're so welcome thank you all right is there a website i have to go to for the student loan forgiveness will unqualified payments count it could potentially so you want to keep monitoring that so for those who have who are public service loan forgiveness, they tell you if your payment, if you have ineligible payments versus eligible payments. Some of those ineligible payments may change because of the limited waiver. So if you just submitted your PSLF form and your loans, oh yeah, your account probably has to be moved from wherever it is now to Mohila. Mohila is going to give you the initial form letting you know this is where you are. So that's basically you getting or having like an approved form on file. So, cause you at least need to have one and then it will begin to update. So they said, once they start doing the updates for all of the limited waiver stuff, you're going to be getting, you should see it change essentially. Do you know how being in bankruptcy is handled? Oh, that's a good one. I do not. You have, if you check the second and it's denied, can you appeal? So if you check the second and you already sent it in, I don't know how long it's going to take for them to give you a denial letter. But one of the things that they did, they just said on here, they said, if you got a denial letter, then apply again. So I don't know how long ago you submitted it, but if you would maybe... Call call the loan servicer if you are up to it to say, hey, this is what I did. I checked the wrong box. I want to resubmit. So if you hopefully you have copies. I don't know if you mailed yours in or if you faxed it in. I'm not sure what you did originally, but especially if you had to go through multiple employers to get your stuff signed. That was another thing I was sharing with folks before you send it off. Keep a copy. 
And when you mail it off, if you decide to mail it off, send it off via tracking. So that way you can know when they received it. I don't know if they'll accept certified mail or not, but you can try to send a certified mail. But I would just say send it where you have the copy of what you sent. And then also you have the tracking of where, of where it was sent. If you already have a Mohila account, you could just upload it directly into your Mohila profile or you can fax it in. Those are the options for the public service loan forgiveness. But I would, if you inadvertently check the second box, then I would try to send in another one before this, thing, before this 31st and then or call them and let them know like, hey, I checked the wrong box. I want to change. I want to resubmit. But yeah. And more than likely, I don't want to speak for the process, but I would think because you have to sign the forms, it's going to be dated with a different date from the first one that they got. So, if you're what if in government building as a contractor, no, you have to be, you have to receive a W 2 from a qualified employer, and for profit entities are not. How do I consolidate all my loans? I filled out a public service loan form and sent it in a month ago. Well, you probably should have consolidated first if you needed to consolidate. Because if you filled out your forms already and you sent it in and sent it in already, then more than likely, if you had loans that were non-direct loans, then those are going to show up as ineligible, ineligible payments or yeah, ineligible because it's under a different loan program. But if you had direct loans, yeah, you should have consolidated first. Before sending in your form. I have to consolidate five small education loans to get the one-time forgiveness. For the one-time debt relief, you don't have to consolidate a thing. You do not have to consolidate anything for the one-time debt relief. Which employer do you add? You add every single employer that's a qualified employer who you work for and that you work 30 hours a week for. I qualify for PSLF with IDR. Do I have to apply for the limited waiver? Again, you want to look at when you submitted your last form to make sure that you're covering all of the periods. I got my refund. I paid twice while it was on pause. You can get a refund if you did. Yes, you can. You have to talk to your loan servicer in order to work that out. So the refunds under the refunds for payments made under the repayment pause. You can get your money back, but you got to work for, with your loan servicer for that. Should we check the first box about checking qualified payments? Y yes. If you know that you have not met 120, because the second box is saying that you believe that you are technically ready for forgiveness at this point, meaning you meet all the criteria, meaning you met the 120 qualified payments, meaning you had the 10 years of service, meaning all of those. So the minute you check that box and they do the count and they say that you don't, you're going to get a denial letter. So if you're not 100% certain, check the first box so that they can tell you what your eligibility is. And that's when you're going to get a letter to tell you how close you are. Which employers do I add on mine? Which years? So PSLF originated in 2007 so october of 2007 so if you work for any qualified employers from october 1 2007 up until now those employers can be included in your public service loan forgiveness application when i read the paperwork it said if 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 you said the wrong box they will review it anyway yeah they're going to review it they're going to review it for sure. And they're going to tell you basically where you are. They're going to tell you basically where you are. So all applications that come in will get reviewed. But if you check the box saying that you're ready for it and you're really not. Then you're not going to get it. I consolidated my parent plus loans. However, Mohila State's parent plus loans are not eligible for. That's right. And that's what I was saying. 
for a parent plus, if you consolidate that, it has to be on a, a specific repayment plan, which is an income contingent repayment plan. And it's the least favorable. I'm just going to say it up front. It's the least favorable repayment plan, but that's the only qualifiable repayment plan for parent plus loans. Unfortunately, that's the stipulation. That's why I say you got to weigh the cost if, if, if that's what you want to do. Am I too late for the one-time debt relief? No, because the application is not out yet. Consolidated in September, fax in my PSLF application. Haven't heard anything, time frame. It can take, it can take a while, to be honest, but it can take a couple of months. But just monitor your My Document section under your FSA ID account. And it'll update the statuses there. At least it should. And then you should also be able to see your status under your Mohila profile too. So all of my employees that I ever have worked for, I'm confused. So only your employers that are an eligible employer. If you work for a public service, meaning you work for a nonprofit, that's a 501c3, or you work for a nonprofit that offers the qualifying services, or if you've worked for a government entity from October 1, 2007 up until now, and it doesn't have to be back to back, this is a time where you want to kind of do a catch up on any of your former employers. If you know that you were in repayment status during the time that you were working with them, maybe I should preface it that way because, and when I say Repayment status, I'm meaning not in in-school status. So anytime that you were in in-school status, then those payment periods will not count for you for public service on forgiveness purposes. But you do want to be able to get your 10-year employment period covered. So if, if you don't, if you work for the same employer for the past 10 years and you only need one. I'm in forbearance now, but have 10 years of service. Will I qualify? So depends on, I mean, if you work for an eligible employer, you, you, you can still s submit a public service loan forgiveness form. And as long as you have a qualified loan, which would be a direct loan, then yeah, you, you can. But the thing is whether or not when the forgiveness will happen. So the forgiveness will happen. <clears throat> the forgiveness will happen once you meet all of the criteria for the 120 and so forth. So if you've been in forbearance for 12 months or more consecutively, those periods will count. If you've been in forbearance for 36 months or more cumulative, those periods will count. If I consolidate all of my loans, will I still qualify for the student loan relief for the student loan relief from Biden? Yes, as long as your original loans that you are consolidating was taken out on or before June 30th, 2022. Are applications being accepted for the one time debt relief? There is no application that is available right now. So to answer your question, no. What if you don't know how many payments you've made? That's the purpose of you checking the first box because the first box in the public service loan forgiveness form will get the loan services to give you your count. And so that's what the purpose of that is. If you don't know, submit the form. They're going to do the count and tell you. When will I hear about my loan consolidation? Your loan consolidation can take a while. It can take 45 days or more. So another thing is if you realize that you have to consolidate or if you have consolidated, don't feel like you have to wait for that loan consolidation to process before you submit your applications for public service loan forgiveness. If you've already consolidated, you can proceed with getting your employers to sign off on your forms and so forth. So as long as you submitted the application for loan consolidation, you can get your updated PSLF forms and before October 31st. What if you have an FFEL loan? It depends on if it's commercially held or 
managed by the Department of Education. So the way you confirm that is by logging into your FSA ID account or by logging into your loan account. And if it says Department of Ed, then that means you have a federally managed FFEL loan. I can't ever get a hold of anyone in Mohila. I'm getting conflicting info from them, website, and Navient. I would take, when you say conflicting information, what information are you getting? Like, what, what what's the conflict? Is it pertaining to your account specifically or is it pertaining to the steps that you need to take in order to be eligible for public service loan forgiveness? Because that you could read on the Department of Education's website. I would say take it from the source, which is studentaid.gov. Thank you all so much for the follows. Thank you. Sorry if this was, it's been asked, parent plus loans on two kids. Do I get two? No. So let me re, let me answer this. I'm going to restate the question and I'm going to answer it. Whew. I have parent plus loans for two children. Do I get two $10,000 for the one-time debt relief or just one for one kid? So the way the one-time debt relief works is that it is based on the borrower, especially when it comes to parent plus loans. So since you are the borrower as the parent, you can be eligible for up to $10,000 if you meet the income criteria of forgiveness. And that's across the board. So it's not going to be per child. It's based on you as the borrower, your balance. So whatever your balance is and however they apply it is going to be based on highest interest rate. I did that breakdown too to show you how, you know, how it's going to work. But that's essentially what what they're going to what they're going to do. And then if you if you were a Pell Grant recipient yourself, then you will be eligible for up to 20,000. So the question would be if you were or if you were not ever a Pell Grant recipient and then that would determine if you get 20k versus 10. <clears throat> what about working on mm, let me see. Because I don't even know what that is. Is it considered a tribal government? I think it is. It says tribal council. So if you work for the reservation, I'm no, I can't even pronounce that, but if you work for that. That or that reservation, and it's a tribal government. If it's considered a tribal government, then then yeah, you could definitely. That's definitely that could definitely be an eligible employer. But you can check it by by putting in their EIN in the search function to see if it comes up. I received a letter that says everything was missing in the form. Woo! I hope you didn't send them a blank form. What did you send them, Nikki? What did you send them? If you got something back, send it again and make sure it's complete before you send it again. October, send it by October 31. You got 15 business days. Time is ticking. What to do if you no longer work at a job? I'm not sure if you covered this already. If you no longer work at a job that is a qualified employer, I'm not sure which one you're talking about, if it's PSLF or not. But if you no longer work at a job that was a qualified employer, then you could definitely use this limited time waiver period to get your certifications done and submitted, even though you no longer work for the employer. So I don't know if you were a public servant and you no longer work for them, but you might want to 
fill out the form for public service on forgiveness and get the former employee to sign in and send it in. Oh, oh God, you guys, I'm so sorry. My body is like, you need to go lay down, young lady. You've been keeping me up all night for the past two weeks. If you, if your FFEL loans are not by federal student loan, am I able to consolidate? So unfortunately, unfortunately, you will not get the one-time debt relief. You will not get the one-time debt relief. Now, as far as I know, as far as I know, let me just make sure before I state this. Because I believe FFEL loans, period, are eligible for are eligible for public service loan forgiveness if you consolidate it. Yeah, I think FFEL across the board is still eligible for public service loan forgiveness if you consolidate it into a direct loan. Not the one-time debt relief because you've missed the window for that. You've missed the window for that. Can you get PSLF and a one-time debt relief? Yes, if you qualify for both. Yes, you do. Yes, you can. I was told... Oh, let's scroll down. I was told I had to create a new student loan account for my loans to apply for the forgiveness. For public service loan forgiveness? Uh, lady, do you have a FSA ID account? Mm -hmm. I don't know what kind of information y'all get. Hey, they put it, the application online yet? No, they have not. Not for the one-time debt relief. No application yet for the one-time debt relief. I feel it was filled out and when I sent it to Nailnet. So, number one, if you sent it to Nailnet, it shouldn't have gone to Nailnet. It should have gone to Mohila. So, for public service loan forgiveness, those forms go to Mohila. The address is in the instructions, I believe, section seven or six or one of those sections. But it tells you where to send it and how to send it, whether it be a mail or via fax or via direct upload if you already have an account with Mohila. So, if you send it to Nailnet, then Nailnet I doubt if they're going to send it over to Mohila for you. You got to make sure that you're following the instructions and you send it into where 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 it should have gone. So hopefully you retained a copy of what you sent. If you sent it in the mail and in that way, I would just make another copy before sending it and send it to Mohila where it should have gone. Hello, sis. How are you? Hello. Thank you for asking me how I'm doing. I'm a little tired, but... <laughs> Trying to get through these last couple questions, and I'm going to go ahead and sign off. Does one need to apply for the one-time debt relief or they're automatic? I did answer this a little bit earlier. It said to be automatic, but the Department of Education has clearly indicated that they're encouraging everyone to apply once the application goes live. So I would say apply once it becomes available. I have employers that qualify, but I'm afraid my consolidation payment will be too high. Yes. So these are the things that you have to take into consideration. Utilize the loan simulator so that way you can see what it will be. So if you go to studentaid.gov forward slash loan dash simulator, they have a tool that you can use to actually pull your actual loan data to see what the impact or what the projections will be if you choose to consolidate your loan and what the expected payment will be. And that can help you make a decision. Does your W-2, do you send your W-2 in with your PSLF form? You don't have to send in your W-2. The only reason why you would want to provide alternative support is if you can't get your employer to sign off or if you can't get a former employer to sign off. In the certification form, there is a checkbox that says unable to get employer to sign because the employer closed or 
unable to get employer to sign because they're refusing to sign. So you can check that box in the certification section. And of course, that means the employer signature part will be blank, but you still have to put in the job, the hours and check, check out all of the fields. But then the bottom, you would check that box to say employer refused to sign or employer close or whatever the case may be. But I would say to help give them to help give them information, I guess, that they need, attach your W-2 as alternative support, showing that you worked for that employer. The thing is, if it's someone who you've worked for for multiple years, then you may have to provide support that, that will cover all of the years. Or I don't know if they can just take what you give them and then find another way to, to verify. But they did say in the form... If you check that box to say employer refused to sign or the employer is, is closed, they said that they're going to take efforts and initiatives to get verification from the employer that, that, that you need. But I would say to help them with their research, give them what you have. And if you have your W-2 that I had the employer's name, the employer's EIN, the year, that you work for them that coincide with the years that's on your employment certification form because you have to put in your years, your period, your employment period there, then that would be helpful. But then, yeah, that would be helpful. So I missed the window. What can I do? So you missed the consolidation window for the one-time debt relief. But if you're eligible for public service loan forgiveness, you have not missed the window for that. You have until December 31st. I'm sorry. You have until October 31st. October 31st. <laughs> not anymore. I haven't used it since 2011. Oh, well, yeah. Yeah, yeah. If you haven't used it since 2011, you definitely want to make sure that you create. You can create a new account. If you, or you can request a, a password reset, but I don't know what emails and stuff that you use. If you don't know, just try to create a new one. Is there a way to send you a message so I can ask my question in its entirety? You can definitely send me a, a DM. So my Instagram is connected to my profile. So you can send me a DM. I probably won't be able to check it tonight, but you can send me a DM. And once I get to it, I normally try to check it before I go live so that I can act, answer people's questions who send me DMs. So you could definitely do that. Or you could subscribe to my YouTube page and leave a comment on one of my YouTube videos. I'm really backed up on looking at all my YouTube comments, by the way, because this has just been a very stressful week. So I need to get caught up. Maybe I'll try to do that tonight before going to sleep. At least go through all of those comments on my YouTube page. I used to work for the student loan department. Is that false information? Um, when you say you used to work for the student loan department, who? You used to work for the Department of Education? So it's, it's based on your employer and your employer's EIN. So they transferred to Mojito. Oh, okay, so they transfer. Oh, okay, so if they transfer it to Mohila, then you got a letter back from Mohila, Nikki. I'm assuming. You said you missed the window for debt relief. What what is that, and what have we missed the window for? For those who have federally, I'm sorry. For those who have commercially held FFEL loans, the cutoff for those to consolidate their commercially held FFEL loans into a direct loan. The cutoff was September 28th. So for anybody who consolidated their commercially held FFEL loans into a federal loan on or before September 28th, 2022, they can be eligible to receive the one-time debt relief of either 10K or 20K if their income qualifies them. So that's the window that I was referring to because September 29th, they shut it down. So if you consolidated on September 29th, you will not receive the debt relief, the one-time debt relief.
Any word on when they'll post? Yeah, it's, yeah. They're not gonna post. I don't know. Wait till the application comes out. We gotta wait till the application comes out. No, I don't qualify for public service. Thank you for the, oh, okay. So you don't qualify for public service. Okay, so oh, so unfortunately, unfortunately, yeah. You missed the window. I'm sorry, hidden. I'm sorry. My son is in college. I have unsubsidized. I have subsidized and unsubsidized loans. And receive Pell Grant. What do I qualify? So your son is in college. You have your own subsidized and unsubsidized loans that you have taken out for yourself. And you are a Pell Grant recipient. As long as you meet the income criteria, you can be eligible for up to 20000 Can bankruptcies be in the Fresh Start program? I have to check into that. Somebody else asked a question about bankruptcy. I have to look into that. Whew, I have to look into that. I was able to set up my new Mohila account, but then Rex did a letter say everything was missing on it. Hmm. Hopefully you still have a copy of what you sent. That's the only thing. Are there two applications that's needed to be submitted? PSLF and TS, TPS. So no. So the the public service loan forgiveness form and the temporary expanded public service loan forgiveness form is all on one form. I'm gonna show y'all real quick. Even though, even though I got a video on this, but I'm gonna show you guys, and then I'm gonna sign off. Then I'm gonna sign off. Cause it's been two hours y'all it's been two hours i love serving but my voice is cracking okay my voice is cracking okay let's see let's see if i can find a form i'm just gonna show this to you guys apply now Whew. all right Ooh, let's do this real quick Ooh. Okie doke. So this is the limited waiver. Where's the form? There's a link for the form. Normally, it'll take me right to it. <sighs> there it is. All right. Blow this up. Blow this up. Can you guys see this? Public service loan forgiveness and temporary expanded public service loan forgiveness certification and application. So they have combined, it's the same form, it's the same form. They have combined the temporary expanded public service loan forgiveness certification, which is the employer certification piece and the actual application of you saying that you want to be able to apply. So I'm going to go over this real quick. So section one is you putting in your borrower's information okay next part is you requesting this is where you're requesting the forgiveness so when you're ready to say i've met the 120 and i'm ready for y'all to forgive me for public service loan forgiveness forgive my direct loans under public service loan forgiveness you check boxes one and or two. I'm sorry, you check boxes two and or three. Check boxes two and or three. If you believe you qualify for forgiveness at the time that you're submitting this application, meaning right now, you check that box. If you are unsure, do not check this box. If you are unsure, do not check this box. If you indicated that you believe that you qualify for forgiveness now and you want forbearance while your application is being processed, 
and you understand that the periods of forbearance will not count towards forgiveness, then you check that box. So typically you would check this and this in combination. Ooh, sorry. I'm looking at the screen, but I just realized it got fuzzy on you. So typically you would send this in combination or you would just send this. If you don't want them to put it in forbearance, you just want them to apply. And then if they'll tell you if you meet, if you met the criteria or not, then of course they'll tell you what you have left or how far you had to go, but you'll get a denial letter. And then if you just want to know how many qualifying payments you have, you just want to know if your employer is a qualified employer, you just check the first box. This is the certification. Basically, you're certifying that all of the information that you've provided is accurate and complete and true to your best of your knowledge. You're going to sign and date. And you're going to check this box if you cannot obtain certification from your employer because the organization is closed or because the doc or because the documentation of or because the organization refuses to certify your employment. The department will follow up to assist you in getting your documentation. So you still need to complete section three, but you don't complete that signature part. That's the part what I was saying. I was saying to you guys. So these are the employer section where you're going to put in the employer name. You're going to put in the EIN. You're going to put in the employer's address. You're going to put in their website. If you have it, you're going to put in your periods when you were working with them. Begin date, end date. You're going to put if you're still employed there. So when you started and if you're still there, you're going to put your employment status. If you're full-time, part-time, number of hours of work per week. This is where it gets into you determining whether or not if your employer is an eligible employer. So you have to go through these questions, check the boxes or whatever that applies and work your way down. This piece, no one will sign if you check that box that I was showing you up before around the employer not signing or the organization being closed. And then this is the instructions. This is what qualifying payments mean. Qualified employment definitions is all here. And then this is where you send it. Section seven. If you need help completing the form, call them or go to the website. And then more information on T on PSLF and temporary expanded PSLF. So it's all in one form. They've lumped everything in one employment certification and application for actually applying for the forgiveness. They've lumped it in one. Okay, everybody. Okay, everybody. I think it's going to be a night for me. If you guys don't mind, it's been two hours. Let me see. We're going to we're going to aim for Wednesday at 8 p.m. We're going to aim for Wednesday at 8 p.m. So prayerfully what happened last Wednesday will happen this Wednesday <laughs> and I can be able to come live and ask, ask any questions. I do want to encourage you when we do go live again, come prepared to fill out whatever it is that you need to fill out so that way we can do what we just did here. If there's something, if you're filling it out right now in the process, say, hey, I'm on this. Can we go over it? Like have your laptops ready, have your computers ready, have another device ready so that we can walk through it. Some of y'all may have questions around consolidation. Now I can't technically walk you through a live consolidation because I don't have any loans, but there is a feature for loan simulation. So if you're in the process of trying to do a loan consolidation, we can do a live demo on whatever questions you have or whatever questions you may come across, whether it be, does this consolidation make financial sense for me on a monthly basis if I make this change? What are the different types of, of loans that you know I have or that you have or that would essentially qualify for the public service on forgiveness that would need to be consolidated. So we can do that. But again, since I don't have live data and I don't have your live data, I can only go by a demo and maybe we can walk through some of the scenarios and I can 
select those types based on what you share that you have. If you're willing and open to do that, then maybe we can. I don't know if I can invite anybody like on here to do a double live. I don't know if y'all want want anybody in your business or whatever, but if maybe we'll just do it through the chat. If there's something that you have a question on when we come back, then we we it's time to put the pedal to the metal because we're four, 15 business days out from this deadline. Thank you. So informative. You're so welcome. Thank you so much for being here tonight. When will you go live again? Is this for loan forgiveness? So yes, this is for the public service loan forgiveness. And the minute that the one-time debt relief application comes out, y'all know we're going to be live and I'm going to be trying to walk you guys through it in case you have questions. So definitely. But this particular one is coming up because we have an October 31 deadline. It's mainly my emphasis is on public service loan forgiveness, those who qualify for public service loan forgiveness. Okay. So hope you, hopefully you all will be flexible enough in understanding that because they have a tighter deadline than this one-time debt relief because you have plenty of time to do that and the application not even available yet. So my focus is helping those who qualify for public service loan forgiveness to be able to get whatever it is that they need to get in so that they can qualify for public service loan forgiveness. That's my goal. That's my motto. Amen. Amen. <laughs> and make sure that you subscribe to my YouTube channel. The Debt Demolisher TV is my YouTube channel. I've had my channel for almost five years now, teaching on personal finances and sharing my debt elimination journey of how far I've come. And now I'm teaching other people how to do the same. So hopefully I'll see you on that end of the stick as well. But you guys, I want to remind you, Wednesday, 8 p.m. Eastern Time, I will go ahead and create a live event so that way you can know when the next live stream will be. But it'll be Wednesday, 8 p.m. And come ready. Come ready. Come ready. Thank you all so much. As always, your financial prosperity awaits you and so does your financial sanity. You already know, well, you may not already know if you're not on my YouTube channel, but you already know what I'm getting ready to tell you to do. And that's what? Get to work. All right. Good night. And thank you for anyone who became a subscriber over here. TikTok has given me the ability to have subscribers. So I think that's pretty cool. So thank you. <laughs> thank you all the hearts and the stars and the gifts and all that stuff. I appreciate it. Okie doke. Bye, guys. <laughs>